Hey guys, Filthy Robot here, bringing another guides, tips, and tricks video. This time answering the question of how good is the Crusader? All right, so quick caveat. Uh, we're basing these guides on the assumption you were playing on the highest difficulty in the game. Um, but even if you aren't, the information we talk about should be applicable to what you're doing because anything that works in the most dangerous of scenarios is also going to work on the easier scenarios. So that said, let's talk about the Crusader. Um, Crusader stats are at the bottom of the screen below the webcam. You can have a look at them with me here. Um, as a whole, the Crusader has a ton of HP. I think one of the two or three highest in the game. Um, average dodge, very low speed, and that's a huge problem. That is literally the worst part about the Crusader. Slowest character, I think, I think it's the slowest character in the game, although it might be tied with the Leper. Um, that's a big problem. Um, average crit percentage, um, pretty high damage as damage range goes. Um, a little bit above average sun resist, average blight resist, average bleed resist, average disease resist, a um, little bit above average move resist, average debuff resistance, and not a trap disarmor, and has pretty poor movement, only one forward, one back. Um, there is a little bit of a redeeming feature for that, which is Holy Lance, which means if you're in position 3-4, you can move one forward and attack position 3-4, but that is still fairly situational, as sometimes there is no target in position 3-4, and uh, you're not able to do that, and that one move can become a problem sometimes. So, a bit of a slow character overall. Um, the Crusader is a character that is primarily a stunner with secondary role of stress healer. Um... It's not really a damage dealer at all, except on boss fights. Uh, when you're fighting trash mobs, you actually don't want to kill position one, two, and that's the only damage, that's the only positions the Crusader can reliably do damage to, position one, two, uh, because you want to keep them as live as po alive as long as possible while stunning them to keep your stress healing going. So um, the Crusader's not really a damage dealer, despite having fairly good damage, which is okay because it means on the the boss fights you get an unexpected damage dealer who's not really there for damage dealing. But on the trash mobs, it's not really something you're going to be wanting to do with them. Uh, let's talk through uh, the Crusader's abilities. Smite is um, it's fairly useless. This is your uh, bread and butter attack. It can only attack the front two ranks, which is a huge problem. It does additional damage to Unholy, um, but there really aren't that many uh, uh, Unholy bosses that you're going to be using this on. The only boss it's really that useful for is uh, the Undead Crew, because uh, most of the time, uh, in position 1-2, there aren't bosses there. The The Prophet is in position 4, the Necromancer is going to be in position 1-2 very briefly and then move to position 3-4, and it's just most of the time you're not going to get much bonus out of that, that damage versus Unholy at all. Um, Zealous Accusation, um, as an AoE goes, it's okay in the fact that it's uh, it's only a minus 40% damage mod and it hits the front two ranks. It hits two targets with only minus 40%, which means it does more damage overall than just single target damage dealing. Uh, the problem is you don't want to do AoE damage to position 1-2. Uh, you want to keep position 1-2 alive so you can recover. You want to kill position 3-4. Position 3-4 is almost always more dangerous with the stress casters than position 1-2. Um, I do use this ability. I, again, I use it on the Drown Crew uh, fight because I can both hit the Anchorman and the boss behind him. Um, and it's also actually pretty good on um, the new uh, Crimson Court DLC uh, Stonework boss as well. Because uh, you can do this for the exact same reason that it's okay on uh, the Undead Crew. So not a useless ability, but pretty damn situation situational to be useful. Um, stunning Blow. Um, this is a subpar stun. Um, it does a little bit of damage. Uh, actually, a ch yeah, a little bit of damage. Uh, with an okay stun modifier, although nothing out of the nothing exceptional on the stun modifier. The biggest problem with it is it only hits position uh, one two, which means it is good for the recovery portion of the fight when you're just trying to keep position one two alive. But it's pretty poor in the beginning uh, race stage of the fight where you're trying to kill or disable the high high value targets in the back. So um, I don't think very much of stunning blow, but this is the the number one ability you'll be using on the Crusader. Um, or maybe the number two. We'll get to the number one in a minute. So, um, it is what it is. Uh, this is also particularly made worse because the Crusader is so slow. Stuns are more valuable, or stunners are more valuable the faster the character is, which means that uh, a minus a, a slow speed uh, character like the Crusader with a stun, it makes his stun even less good than it would be otherwise. Um, can be okay if you get out of sequence. In other words, if you're always stunning after their action each round, it still prevents their next round of action, which is okay, but it's not going to help you in the early stage. Again, that's going to be mostly something that helps in the later stages of the fight. 
Um, Bulwark of Faith just got a buff. Um, it's much more interesting now than it's ever been before. Uh, it gives you a big chunk of Torchlight. Uh, you can only use this once per battle. It gives you a big, uh, big chunk of Torchlight as well as putting a mark on yourself and giving you a large protection buff. Um, I don't really recommend marking yourself very often. Um, yes, it will increase the likelihood that some enemies attack you, but it almost always the enemies that increase the likelihood to attack you that have abilities that uh, they want to attack marked targets on almost always have higher crit percentage versus marked targets too. And it's rarely the damage, although sometimes the damage is scary. Most of the times it's the stress that's caused by the extra criticals when you get criticaled, uh, when you have a mark on you. And this protection doesn't help you versus the stress. So the protection will help you versus the damage, and you might get hit a little bit more, but it's not a guarantee that they attack you, uh, and that's much more likely that they crit you, and that kind of sucks. So um, it's still interesting. This the, the Crusader can now get fairly high protection between using this once per battle plus some other stuff. Um, it comes out to be a fair amount of protection, but I'm not sure that that is that meaningful on a character without guard. Uh, so I don't really like this. I often don't even have it on my bar. My bar tends to be these four abilities right here. And that still doesn't include room for Bulwark of Faith. And when I go into the boss fights where I want to use Zealous Accusation, I'll drop the stun to pick up Zealous Accusation. So, uh, Battle Heal is fairly shit. Um, this is an ability that can only be used from the front two ranks. You can heal, I think it's the back three ranks, uh, like rank one, two, three. But there might, it might be, I can't remember exactly the limitations on which cl uh, places you can heal. I just know there are some limitations and it's annoying because of that. The heal amount is very, very small. It stays very small throughout the course of the game. And even if you use a bunch of items, of which there are a couple the Crusader can equip that will increase his healing amount, it's still really fucking small. It makes it so he cannot be a primary healer. And you don't want your healer being this slow anyways. It's awkward for um, recovery fights and it's also really bad if you ever in a situation where uh, an, one of your other characters has a death door debuff and you need to get ahead of them so you can heal them before the dot kills them. This is also terrible to have him as a primary healer. This ability is garbage. I don't recommend ever training it. Uh, in the early game in particular, it's um, it almost always it heals for two, whereas Inspiring Cry will heal for one. And that's ridiculous because um, Inspiring Cry also has a stress heal on it. Uh, so Inspiring Cry will heal you for health. Uh, give you additional torchlight and heal you for stress. Inspiring Cry is probably the best ability the Crusader has, and it's the ability you use probably most after the stun. Um, and that's really why you bring a Crusader on the the mission in the first place. He's a chunky, you know, he's a high hit point character who sits in the front, takes a lot of damage, who throws out stuns to help you recover uh, or help you get to the recovery stage, and in the recovery stage, throws out stress heals to actually help you recover, uh, which is pretty damn good. Um, he's one of only three stress healers in the game which means I wouldn't use this character class ever for any reason whatsoever, except that he's a stress healer. And there's only three of them in the game. You only have the Jester, the Hound, and the Crusader. So I get more, I get availability of more comps. Um, I get access to more comps by having a Crusader to do the stress healing element of that of the, of the game, which is the only reason why I'd ever bring the Crusader. When I itemize for the Crusader, I try to itemize for speed if possible, um, because what I really want to have happen is me act ahead of some of my opponents so I can get extra rounds in for uh, stress healing. Uh, finally, Holy Lance, I think we talked about that already, uh, but just a quick recap. It does allow you to move forward if you get shuffled. I keep it on my bar for emergency scenarios. I don't really care about the crit percentage or the damage versus Unholy. Rarely do I ever use this for damage. Mostly I use this for positioning. I guess occasionally it can be helpful if you get shuffled, but really the things you should be prioritizing are getting uh, scouts off as much as possible in a dungeon so you don't get surprised, so you don't get screwed by characters with bad positioning. All right, let's talk about the Crusader skills. Um, Zealous Vigil is, um, it's fairly shit, honestly, because um, uh, most of the time you have a better option to prevent nighttime amb ambush, and I don't really think it's worth it alone for the minus 25 stress. Uh, it's rare that the Crusader will be much higher stressed than everybody else, um, and the Crusader is a, in of himself a stress healer which means that uh, most of the time when you have a Crusader on a mission, you'll have some way to combat stress that isn't just camping. Um, however, uh, the minus 40 stress if you're afflicted can be something, um, probably not enough, and you're probably not going to want to continue dungeons uh, when you're afflicted, uh, if they're, just because the lack of control you get over your characters once they're afflicted is generally what kills you uh, when they do stupid things outside of your control. But I guess minus 40 stress is not, uh, not nothing, and it will help you get to a point where you can uh, stress heal down to zero stress and get rid of your affliction. Um, prevent Nighttime Ambush is nice if no one else has it, so in an emergency scenario, this could be okay. And it's not any more expensive than the other Prevent Nighttime Ambushes, so in that case, it's okay. Um, I think I sometimes train it, but I rarely use it. 
Zealous Speech, I like. Um, it's a little bit overpriced in my opinion at five, but it is a very powerful um, stress heal. Uh, the party as a whole and all, uh, gains minus 15. I think it's, I don't actually think it is the party of the whole. It says party, but I don't think he gets it himself, but maybe he does, I can never remember. But everybody else gets minus 15% stress uh, for their, uh, as a buff for the next four battles and also loses 15 stress, which is good. Um, it's good AOE stress healing. Uh, stand tall. Um, I almost never use this because it's like a really bad uh, encourage. Whereas encourage is minus 15 stress for plus two um, for the time buff of two rather. Uh, stand tall costs four. It does remove mortality buffs as well, but uh, rarely do I consider removing a mortality uh, debuff all that important. Um, I actually the only time I can think that I would go out of my way to do that is Darkest Dungeon 3 and if I was trying to do some sort of speed oriented strategy where I was always trying to go ahead of the eye stock so they don't teleport me in which case one of my guys having that minus one speed might be a problem but 99% of the time I don't think that matters whatsoever so I wouldn't pay the extra two uh, extra two cost to have to use stand tall as opposed to encourage. Um, Unshakable Leader is also fairly bad um, it's for three itself only minus 25% stress for four battles I just feel like there's just better ways to spend my camping points than this. So as a whole, um, I think the Crusader's abilities are weak. I think the, the Crusader's stats are weak. And I think the uh, Crusader's camping buffs are weak. Um, oh, and I also think the character, uh, this isn't part of the review of the character, I guess, but maybe it should be, uh, is that uh, I also think the Crusader items are fairly weak. <laughs> so the Crusader-specific items in the game are fairly weak. However, I'm giving the Crusader... I was going to say average by lie. I'm going to give him weak. I want to give him average just because he's one of the three stress healers and I bring him all the time. But I suppose bringing him because I have to bring him doesn't make him uh, less, or less weak or less strong. Or rather, doesn't make him more strong. It just makes him necessary. And necessary is not the same as strong or good. So, no, I would rate the Crusader as one of uh, the weaker characters in the game. But often one of the characters that you're leveling despite not wanting to because you need Inspire and Cry. So, all right, guys. Hope this was useful. Hope this was something to think about. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you soon.